Hi everyone, it's Tarrant. And Stella from the Dice Tower. Thanks for joining us. Today we'll be teaching you how to play Goblin Uprising, game designed by Fabio and Andre Escalio Atasio and published by Dream Valley Studios. We are using a prototype copy here of the game and so the rules and components may not be final. Let's get to it! In Goblin Uprising, players are goblins, the short races in the land of Eldane. Oppressed by the tall races, including one of four fearsome tyrants, the goblins are now rising back, going out and questing, adventuring, fighting troops, leveling up, and ultimately taking the fight to the tyrant. The game begins as a cooperative quest as players work together to fight down the tyrant. But be warned, the tyrant's behaviour can be unpredictable and the objective of the game may change and even pit the goblins against each other. To set up, assemble the eight board pieces into the map of Eldane. You can do this in any configuration, this one is recommended for your first play. Place a goblin village into one of these corner notches for each player in the game. Each differently coloured area is called a region, and each smaller area delineated by these lines is called a space. Take and shuffle up the exploration tokens, and then face down place one onto each space, showing a number one or two icon. Return any leftovers to the box. Find and lay out all troop hexes except for the royal guard. Then for each of the six regions, take the mini for the troop which matches that region, and place it onto the castle space within that region. This is the Dwarf Marauder for the mountains, Human Guard for the prairie, Scaly Kobold Looter for the desert, Wood Elf for the forest, Merfolk Reef Raider for the reef, and Zombie in the tundra. These hexes show the enemy's health and attack. Choose a tyrant to face and then take its sheet and its deck of scheme cards. Go through that deck to find its starting scheme, which is the one represented by the exclamation mark, and deal that face up. Place royal armor tokens equal to its armor value. Place a small destruction tracker cube on the space one of the destruction track. Then shuffle up the behaviour deck and deal one card face down to here. This is the card which is going to tell you what the end game condition and victory condition changes to when that behaviour is revealed. Place the tyrant's mini on the central castle and place an extra starting troop into the region which matches the tyrant. Each player now chooses a goblin class they'll be playing as for the game. Take its sheet and the marker for tracking Renown along the bottom of the board. Take all your coloured cubes and then place one into one of your two level one abilities. This will be the starting ability that you have for combat. Shuffle the goblin deck and then draw goblin cards equal to your leadership, this number here. Take your choice of tribe card from the tribe deck. This will be a once off effect that you can take during the game. If your goblin has any special components, take them now. For example, the ranger gets a pet companion. Then take your mini and place it in a village. Keep all other components nearby and ready for use. You'll shuffle the adventure deck but won't need to shuffle anything else. Choose a first player and you're ready to play. Goblin Uprising is played in rounds. In each round, each goblin will first take a turn going clockwise around the table, and then the tyrant will take a turn. On each turn, a goblin can take three actions, which can be to move, to explore, or to rest. There are also some free actions that a goblin can take. Then to finish its turn, the goblin must face a heroic deed, which is either to fight an enemy in its region, or face a goblin adventure card. The tyrant's actions then may involve adding trips to the board, fighting, and other effects negative to the players. But let's first have a look at how to take a goblin's turn. On your turn, you start by taking three actions, and there are three different options you can take. Move, interact, or rest. You can take actions in any combination, except you can only rest once per turn. To take the move action, simply move your goblin one space, 
that is over one white line. There are no restrictions on where you can or cannot move, or which other minis can be in the space when you move. The second action is interact, and for this you must share a space with either an exploration token or a quest token. These come on the board later. For an exploration token, flip it over and resolve it. Then discard it from the board. This token lets you take an essence, one of the game's main resources, and each player can only hold as much essence as shown here. This one lets you draw a new goblin card, and there's no limit on the number you can have. This one grants you a renown, but not all explorations turn out well, as this one will result in you being ambushed by a troop. We'll cover ambushes and combat later in the video. Your third option is rest, which you can only do once per round. When you rest, you can either heal two health, or gain two essence. There are several free actions you can also take. You can use the effect of your tribe, resolving the effect on the card, and then flipping the card over to its exhausted side. Unless you find a specific effect which unexhausts this card, this will be a once per game action. You can play a goblin card from your hand, discarding it to the discard pile, to take the immediate effect printed at the bottom of the card. And there are actions you can take by spending your renown. You can spend one renown to draw a new goblin card. You can spend two renown to gain one of your character's new abilities. Take a cube of your colour and place it in an ability which is next in your tech tree. That is, you can do a level 1 ability, or a higher level that is attached to one you already have. And once per game, you can spend 5 renown to gain a guardian card. These are powerful, helpful characters, with their own minis, which will give you additional powers going forward. But we'll talk more about those later. To finish your turn, you must attempt a heroic deed, and this can either be to attack an enemy in your region, or resolve an adventure card. We'll talk about attacking first. First, choose any one enemy, which can be a troop, a general, or the tyrant, in your region. It does not have to be in the same space. In this example, we're going to attack the Wood Elf. You'll want to take note of the enemy's hex, it will tell you its health and its attack. Choose any one of your abilities which you have unlocked, all of these are attack abilities, and then take a number of green attack dice based on the ability you've chosen. Now roll those dice, and resolve the ability's text effect if you wish. Now resolve the dice. A star is a success, and deals one hit. For each essence icon, you can spend one essence to score it as a hit. An uprising icon automatically counts as a hit, and it lets you play one goblin card from your hand, discarding it, for its uprising effect, which is the one shown here next to the uprising icon. In this case, you would gain one extra attack die, hoping to roll more hits. Blanks count for nothing. At this point, you may also add further uprising icons to your result by spending one renown per icon. Doing this one here would let me score another automatic hit, and then play this card for its ability. Two hits, and one damage to myself. Once you've done all these manipulations, you'll add up the total hits, and then deal one damage to the enemy per hit. If the enemy had armour, then you would ignore one hit per armour without damaging the armour. So in this case, the six hits would cause four damage. If an enemy suffers damage equal or greater than its health, then the enemy is defeated, and you remove it from the board. And you gain two renown, an essence, and a goblin card as reward. If the enemy is not defeated, then it counterattacks, and for a troop or a general, you will roll one of the grey dice. The enemy deals hits equal to this number, plus the effect rolled on the die, so here it would be three hits. The axe adds no hits, but it deals the hits on the hex to all players in the region, not just the one being counterattacked. The arrow makes it an aimed attack, which cannot be defended by any means. Well, this icon makes the player lose an essence. For any hits that you suffer, you will suffer one damage, 
Or, instead of taking a damage, you can discard a Goblin card. There are some other cards and abilities which might prevent damage. If you didn't defeat the enemy, but you survived the counterattack, then you gain one renown as reward. If you did not survive, then you've fallen. Discard all your goblin cards, lose one renown, increase the tyrant's destruction marker one step, return to full health, and return your goblin to its starting village. If you're fighting more than one of the same enemy, then you'll fight the entire army. You'll still roll the dice only once, and you'll track any hits on the single hex. Once you've done damage which meets or exceeds the health, then any excess is lost and you'll remove one of those enemies from the board. Unless you attacked with a piercing ability, which is the ones with these spikes on the sides of the box, in which case excess damage does carry over. When an army of more than one enemy counterattacks, then you will still roll the grey die only once. You'll simply add one extra hit per additional enemy still in the army. So, for example, say that this turn started with three marauders and one was eliminated by the attack. There would be two marauders left and the number of hits dealt would be one plus one plus one for the extra, so a total of three. You can choose to attack the tyrant as your heroic deed if you share a region. This is resolved with some key differences. Firstly, even though it's your turn, the tyrant attacks first, and you will be the counterattacker. You and the enemy still resolve your attacks the same way as described before, just in the opposite order. And you must survive the first attack in order to get the chance to make your counterattack. When the tyrant attacks, it is not with the grey die, but instead with the black tyrant die. Other than extra damage, this die could force you to discard a card, resolve the tyrant's power, which is this shown here, or to spawn a new troop. To do this, you'll roll the red die, take the matching troop mini, and then place it in its matching region, which we went through in setup. This die can be used for all purposes of choosing a random troop or a random region. Finally, you'll note that the tyrants start with huge amounts of royal armour, and this makes them very difficult to damage early in the game until you've removed the armour. Armour is primarily removed by solving schemes. The tyrant will have one scheme card face up at any given time, and there will be an objective on that card. When you meet that objective and complete it, then you'll remove the number of royal armour tokens showing here, then discard the card and draw a new scheme. It's from these scheme cards that you'll end up bringing generals into play. These are special and powerful enemies with their own hex and their own mini, and you'll fight these in the same way that you do the troops. If you don't wish to or cannot attack an enemy for your heroic deed, then you must instead go on an adventure, drawing the top adventure card and resolving it. If the card shows the uprising icon down at the bottom, then this adventure is a choice, and you pick between the left and right effect on the card. If the card shows a number, then you must roll the dice to determine your fate. You will roll five dice. And before rolling, you can invite other goblins to come on the adventure with you by spending one of your own essence to allow that player to roll one die. You can do this up to as many times as your leadership value. Players roll the dice and then count up the successes. As usual, stars and uprising markers count as successes, but in this case you cannot use the uprising effect on any cards when you roll it. Essence icons can be converted to success by the player who rolled it spending an essence. If you meet or exceed the number of successes required, you resolve the effect on the left, Otherwise, you resolve the effect on the right. It will be necessary in some cases to invite other players, because there are some adventures requiring more than five successes. Finally, there is one other type of adventure, which is the ambush, and this works the same way as finding an ambush exploration. You will spawn a random troop off the red die, and it will attack you immediately. You'll be allowed to counterattack if you survive the attack. 
Once all players have taken a turn, it's time for the Tyrant's turn, and this is broken up into three phases. First is the upkeep phase. Read the current scheme card, and if there is an at the start of every Tyrant's turn effect, resolve that now. Second is the tyranny phase. You'll advance the destruction marker one step along the destruction track, and then resolve the effect of your new location. This will always involve reinforcing a number of random troops based on the number in your current area of the destruction track. As you move down the track, it will start to resolve some more immediate effects, such as bringing generals into play, resolving the tyrant's special ability, and eventually oppressing. On the turn that the marker reaches oppress, and on every turn thereafter, every goblin suffers two damage, and goblins who run out of health no longer return to their village. They are now out of the game. When you reach the fifth tyranny phase, you will reveal the behavior card that was placed here in setup, and this may change the game. This card will give you the game's new win condition. You could still be cooperatively trying to defeat the tyrant. Or you could end up with new enemies to face. Or a semi-cooperative objective, or it could simply turn into a free-for-all in which the last goblin standing wins. If the cards require you to count anything, you can use these tyrant counters to do that. Finally, when you reach the sixth space, the tyrant becomes aggressive, and this impacts the third phase of the tyrant's turn, which is attack. In the attack phase, an aggressive tyrant, and any other aggressive enemies on the board, will attack all goblins in their region. This follows the same rules as normal combat, and players do have the opportunity to counterattack. If there are no aggressive enemies on the board, then you'll skip the attack phase. Play then passes back to the first player. Once per game on their turn, a player may spend 5 renown to gain one of the guardians. Take the guardians mini and nest your goblins mini inside it. They are one and the same for the rest of the game even if you fall and have to go back to your starting village. Each Guardian comes with two effects, a passive ability shown at the top, which is always in effect, and then an active ability, which you can activate on your turn at the cost of two of your three actions. Guardians can be really helpful, but you may want to wait until you see the behavior card before you take one, as some of them are much more helpful in attacking other players, and some are much better in the fully competitive game. If the game turns competitive, then you can spend your heroic deed attacking a different player in your region instead of an enemy. This will still resolve as an attack by the active player, and then a counterattack by the inactive player. If you defeat another player in combat, then you steal one of their goblin cards before they discard them, and you gain one renown. Up until the point that the behavior card is revealed, the game is cooperative, and if before that point you manage to defeat the tyrant, then the game is over and all players win. In a fully cooperative game once the behavior card is revealed, the players win once they meet the objective. They lose if all players are eliminated once you've reached the oppress condition. In a semi-cooperative or fully competitive game, continue playing until someone meets the objective on the card. And that's how to play Goblin Uprising. Check out the project page of Goblin Uprising. We'll put the link in the description below so you can check it out. If you find this video useful, please help us by hitting that like button and subscribe to the Dice Tower if you haven't already done so. And if you have any questions, comments or feedback, please leave that in the comment section below. Thanks for watching and see you next time.